Thank you, Danny. Well, it has been especially hot in San Diego lately, which can increase our risk of getting heat stroke. And here with more on how to recognize the symptoms of heat stroke and how you can avoid it is Dr. Mark Shalata of Scripps, Scripps Clinic in Rancho Bernardo. Thanks so much for being here Thanks this morning. So let's talk about what heat stroke is because it's different from heat cramps or heat exhaustion. So it's a, it's a continuum and here in San Diego we don't have to worry quite so much because usually the weather is pretty nice yeah. but when it changes like this and especially with the humidity going up it puts you at higher risk for heat related illness starting from cramps feeling faint, exhaustion, then heat stroke. So what are some of the symptoms of somebody having a heat stroke that you may recognize or symptoms within yourself you may see? So main thing, you know, well again, it, since it kind of progresses, just not feeling well, getting muscle cramps. When it gets to, when you're in exhaustion, you're sweating a lot, your skin is still kind of cool, you're still, your body's still working to get rid of the heat. When you get to stroke, you're dry. You cannot uh, regulate your temperature anymore, and you're getting to dangerous levels and you know organ shutdown and things like that. So you might see that uh, in somebody that they might start to become confused, disoriented, and they're and they're not sweating. That's a huge sign. Right. So the key is that that difference is they stop sweating because they're not controlling and you're going to get confused. You can have seizures, and it's it's and this can be fatal, fatal right? For sure. So what what do you do at that point if you start to recognize the symptoms? In somebody, hopefully before they reach the the heat stroke level, what's the best thing to do? Take them to the emergency room. So yes, that is an emergency. So heat stroke, they're not doing that. That's 911. Get them somewhere cool. Loosen their clothes. Get ice on them if you can, even if it's just water, and fan them, cool them down. That all helps. Who's more at risk for heat stroke than so, the average person? The young and the old. So elderly, anybody that has chronic medical conditions. Kids, you know, obviously don't leave infants, don't even leave pets in the, you know, the car because it, it will raise so fast. So. And I imagine hydration is one of the key preventing. Again, since we're not used to it getting hot so fast, um, people don't hydrate enough. And by the time you're feeling thirsty, you're already dehydrated. Okay. So you got, you're behind the eight ball already. So what are so, so if you know you're going to have to be working outside or, or doing some sort of physical activity in temperatures like we've seen for mm -hmm. the last couple days, I mean, aside from drinking water, what are the biggest tips that you want to so, give people? Like you mentioned, drinking water even the day before, um, staying hydrated, and again, people don't want to do that, but they don't think to do that. And then, you know, staying covered, trying to work in the morning. Um, Wearing a hat, trying to stay cool, take breaks, those kind of things. Take breaks, really important. Dr. Mark Shalata, thank you so much. Really key tips this time of year, unfortunately. Yeah. Everybody needs to stay hydrated and cool. Appreciate you here this morning. My pleasure.